Yeah. Now, some politicians want to label carbon dioxide a pollutant. Imagine if they succeed. What would our lives be like then? Carbon dioxide. They call it pollution. We call it life. Well, it's life, but not as we know it. That was an advert broadcast recently on TV stations in the US. It seems to be suggesting that the more carbon dioxide we produce, the better off we'll be. And the people who made it don't stop there. You've seen those headlines about global warming. The glaciers are melting. We're doomed. That's what several studies supposedly found. But other scientific studies found exactly the opposite. In fact, 70 out of the 81 glaciers measured by the World Glacier Monitoring Service are shrinking. This pattern, the service says, provides clear evidence of a warming climate. So who made these videos? It's called carbon dioxide. A lobby group called the Competitive Enterprise Institute. It has so far received over $2 million from the oil company ExxonMobil. It's one of dozens of lobbyists which has taken Exxon's money. The things we need. The man who made this spoof of Al Gore's film on climate change claimed he was just an amateur. But his emails came from DCI, another lobby group funded by Exxon. The oil company's activities are causing great concern to scientists in the United Kingdom. This is the Royal Society, Britain's preeminent scientific academy. We've learnt that they have sent in an official letter of complaint about some of ExxonMobil's misleading statements. Hi, Bob. Hi. Bob Ward has just written a paper on the way the oil companies have influenced the media's reporting of climate change. Why has the Royal Society lodged an official complaint with Exxon? The Royal Society feels that some of the documents that ExxonMobil has published recently provide a provides a misleading and inaccurate view of the state of scientific evidence about climate change. And they've also been funding groups that have similarly been producing misleading information. And so we've asked ExxonMobil to stop doing that. One of the journalists singled out for criticism by the Royal Society is the Daily Mail's columnist, Melanie Phillips. In 2004, for example, she wrote that, far from being proved, the claim of man-made global warming is a global fraud. Could it be that you are an unwitting dupe of ExxonMobil's? It could be. Um, it could be. Uh, I have no idea who funds the people that uh, I read and listen to. Um, uh, but I very much doubt whether they are all in the pay of the wicked oil industry. It seems to me that uh, the assertion that underpins it, that we are living through you know, the warmest period in history, is simply not true. Uh, we were, the, the climate was, I don't know, two degrees warmer uh, a thousand years ago. Um, but Melanie, that's simply untrue. I mean, it was a thousand years ago, if you're talking about the beginning of, this, of, of the second millennium, um, it was about 0.2 degrees warmer than the preceding centuries, but still 0.6 degrees cooler than it is today. Well, you say that, but I, I'm given to understand that is not true. Gold leaf are made of the finest Virginia tobacco in the world. We've been here before. A few decades ago, the tobacco companies could blithely create the impression that cigarettes were good for you. Players gold leaf are really worth smoking. I'd like you to rise. For a long time, the bosses of the tobacco firms stuck to their claim that cigarettes did not cause cancer and weren't addictive. Yes or no? Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Mr. Johnston? I believe nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. We have to sell cigarettes to your kids. But as the scientific evidence mounted up, they started using lobbyists to cast doubt in it, much as Exxon has been funding people who maintain that man-made climate change won't cause us serious harm. But the connection doesn't end there. The tobacco industry, how low will they go to make a profit? 
I've discovered that there's a direct link between the tobacco companies and the claim that climate change isn't happening. Searching through their archives, I've found that Philip Morris was one of the first organisations to throw a smokescreen over global warming. Why? Well, the documents I've found show that in 1993, Philip Morris's public relations company advised that a so-called grassroots coalition should be set up to cast doubt on studies showing that second-hand tobacco smoke is dangerous for health. In order not to excite suspicion that Philip Morris had funded this coalition, they suggested that it should link the tobacco issue with other more politically correct products and campaign on issues like global warming. The group Philip Morris set up became one of the major organisations casting doubt on climate change. It was called the Advancement of Sound Science Coalition. It later took $30,000 from Exxon. Some of the invented scientific research this group has circulated, such as the idea that large numbers of glaciers are growing, has been cited by Melanie Phillips. There are people who say that, there are, that the majority of the glaciers are not retreating. The majority of the ice uh, at the poles is actually not retreating. It's a complex picture. Some of it is retreating, some of it is increasing. Why are they trying to scare us? Global warming. The Competitive Enterprise Institute, which made those videos, has also received at least $125,000 from the tobacco firm Philip Morris. We call it live. Some British groups have also taken money from both tobacco and oil companies. Julian Morris runs the International Policy Network, which he admits has received at least £157,000 from Exxon and £10,000 from a tobacco firm. His group lobbies against major cuts in greenhouse gases. I asked him whether he's simply doing the bidding of his funders. We develop our own programmes. Those programmes are independent of any foundation, business or individual. Um, who might be interested in supporting us. We then go out to potential supporters and say, will you contribute to us? Those supporters have no oversight of what we do and do not influence what we say. But if, if you were taking a position which was hostile to those interests, do you think they'd fund you? It, clearly, people who support International Policy Network believe in what we do. <laughs> Same lobby groups, same people, same tactics. Is there any significant difference between the corporate campaign to cast doubt on the dangers of tobacco smoke and the campaign to cast doubt on the dangers of climate change? George Monbiot's personal view. Well, we did hope to speak with someone from ExxonMobil at this point, but they declined to make any...